Malacanang on Thursday, the nice President Rodrigo Duterte initiated moves to hammer out a possible deal with the Maute clan to end the Marawi crisis. A Reuters report Tuesday says a Duterte aide supposedly asked Muslim leader Aga Khan Sharif to help start back-channel talks with leaders of the Maute group. Presidential spokesman Ernesto Abella says, quote, We have no verified reports that there were efforts to initiate such actions as Aga Khan Sharif claims. The aide supposedly arranged for Sharif and Farhana Maute, mother of Maute group leaders Omar and Abdullah Maute, to meet with Duterte in Cagayan de Oro City or Davao City. But the back channel talks did not push through after Duterte said in a speech he would not talk to terrorists. The Supreme Court in a landmark decision Tuesday said that the president should be trusted to declare martial law and should have the sole discretion on its scope. The SC ruling said, quote, The Constitution grants him the prerogative whether to put the entire Philippines or any part thereof under martial law. It adds, quote, There is no constitutional edict that martial law should be confined only in the particular place where the armed public uprising actually transpired. Eleven justices voted to uphold President Rodrigo Duterte's declaration of martial law in Mindanao. But Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio says martial law should be limited only to Marawi City, while Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno and Associate Justice Benjamin Kagiwa voted to limit martial law to the provinces of Lano del Sur, Maguindanao, and Sulu. Associate Justice Marvic Leonin was the lone dissenter in the High Court, siding with the petitioner's bid to nullify Proclamation 216. Leonin, in his dissenting opinion, says, quote, We should have the courage to never again clothe authoritarianism in any disguise with the mantle of constitutionality. Armed Forces Chief Eduardo Año and Philippine National Police Chief Ronald De La Rosa earlier indicated that they would recommend the extension of martial law in Mindanao, which is supposed to end July 22. The National Police Commission will review and correct pronouncements to strip select Mindanao governors and mayors of their administrative power over the police two days after first announcing the decision. The NAPOLCOM, in a June 8 resolution, stripped 132 mayors and seven governors of that power, citing their supposed failure to suppress terroristic acts and prevent lawless violence and some local chief executives' alleged involvement in illegal drugs. Interior Undersecretary Catalino Cui says, quote, We heard the sentiments and the comments of the different mayors, and we explained to them that the resolution was in support of martial law. Cui, as a DILG's officer in charge, also says as chairman of the NAPOCOM, which has administrative control over the Philippine National Police. Local chief executives are automatically deputized by the NAPOCOM and thus have a say in the police commanders assigned to their localities. Military and police are battling Maute and Abu Sayyaf terror groups that tried to take over Marawi City on May 23. This prompted President Rodrigo Duterte to declare martial law in Mindanao. The NAPOLCOM resolution was released Tuesday, the same day the Supreme Court upheld Duterte's declaration of martial law. A magnitude 6.5 earthquake strikes later Thursday afternoon. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology says the quake hit Harolete at 4.03 p.m. FIVOX warns that damage and aftershocks are expected. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center says there is no immediate threat of a tsunami. Follow Rappler.com for continuing updates. Boxing promoter Bob Arum denies he gave Philippine center Manny Pacquiao cold treatment after he lost to Australian Jeff Horn. Pacquiao's media relations head Aquila Sonio, in a Manila Times article, slammed Arum for allegedly treating Pacquiao differently after the loss. Sonia said he felt Aram could be in search of a new cash cow. But Aram says he still has a tremendous relationship with Manny moving forward. In support of National Disaster Consciousness Month, Rappler will hold the first ever AGO Summit on Disaster Preparedness from July 7 to 8 at the Samsung Hall, SM Aura, The Gig. The summit will gather disaster management experts, stakeholders, and volunteers to talk about how we can all be better prepared for climate change and disasters. Tickets are limited, so register today.